it's been far too long. And that's kind of like my catchphrase for this channel. Far too long between videos. But anyway, let's get back into things. What we have here is a solar battery charger. Um, I bought it in Maplin's and I defunct High Street electrical chain, but like Radio Shack in the States, has been reborn as a web only operation. Uh, they tried, they expanded too hard, too fast, and then Brexit and economic downturn and God knows what else put them out of business. Anyway, so this is a handy little thing. Um, it takes AA, AAA battery, C, D cells, um, close it up, charges away. Not the, not as fast as a mains charger, but that's okay. It's it no, it'll charge six AA's in about twenty four hours if the if there's if it's got light. And it doesn't need huge amount of light as long as there's some kind of daylight hitting it. It's fine. Uh, problem with it is um, that the panel inside here got broke, and it's also quite dirty, which has an impact on how it works. Um, oh yes, and there's also a handle here for angling into the sun. You can actually put 5 volts in here, but I've never actually used that function. So anyway, what I want to do is replace this broken solar panel. And the only thing I have that works is this um, solar panel attached to a USB plug, which is basically a very basic phone charger. Like, you charging your phone with this would take a very long time. Now, these batteries here are what... Uh, you 600 milliamp hours, whereas your phone battery is getting on for like three, four, four, four thousand milliamp hours, so there's a big difference. But for this, it would probably work fine. Now, the biggest problem is this is this lump on the back, which is soldered onto the back to get the cables coming out of it. Um, that doesn't seem like it would fit nicely in here, so I'm thinking I might have to cut a hole here to allow this lump to come through. But let's just take it apart to begin with and see where it goes. I'm assuming this will just pop out because it seems to only go as far as here and it's not an active part of the hinge. I'm seeing broken glass. And I think there's a bit of heat. Oh no, I thought there was adhesive there. There's definitely some kind of adhesive going on here. Uh, and there's actually really sharp edges on the, the glass in the solar panel. Let's see if we can take it from this end. This seems more promising. There we go. Oh. Ah, right. So that just sits on there. And there's the panel. Um, yes, so that is. There's our terminals here. Um, it isn't marked which is positive, which is negative. So, and because this panel doesn't actually work anymore, I can't really test it, and they don't have any markings. So I might need to do a bit of trial and error. So, oh, there you go. It's quite a nice panel actually. So, get the snips and snip it off. I will dispose of that somehow. I'll clean this out. Um, now most of the dirt in here is on the outside actually, there's nothing on the inside. But anyway, let's just see if this fits in. It doesn't really fit in exactly, there's this ridge around the inside that the over panel fit in perfectly. So I'm kind of thinking to actually not bother with this at all. Just remove that and maybe use a bit of hot glue and stick that in directly and wire, just connect those two wires up 
Oakley Dokley. Hmm, what am I going to do? I'll tell you what I'll do to start with is... I should really strip this back, shouldn't I? Um, and then join these up. Actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll start off by trimming here and here. Very thin wire. That's aluminium, isn't it? Yeah, it's aluminium. Very, very fine. So there's not a lot of current going on here. 100 milliamps, something like that. Uh, now these things here you can buy on eBay for about a dollar each. They're really cheap. So, like... Don't worry about wrecking them. Yay! They've actually got a red and a... A red and a white, positive and neutral. Sip a bit more of that off. And of course I've taken the sheafing off the red. Not to worry, I can work with that. So these uh, strippers are actually pretty good with fine wire most of the time. So, and that's even thinner than this wire. <laughs> Don't know if you can see that, but it's really, really fine. Like Angel's hair. I don't know how fine Angel's hair is, but I'm told it's pretty fine. So, what I'll do is, I'll switch on my meter and see if indeed the positive and the negative are correctly wired up. So, I should get a positive voltage if this is the case. Yeah, 4.45, so 4.5 volts. And I'm just going to do it the other way around just to show the difference. So yeah, minus 4 and a bit volts. Hunky dory. So, what I will do now is tie up. positive here, just twist them and hopefully if it works this light should come on here that's the light to say it's receiving a solar charge perfect so everything's good so what I need to do now is solder these up now Am I going to solder them in alignment or am I going to solder them at the right angle? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it this way. So that I can attach them up like this. Put a bit of tape around so there will be like a kink in it, but I'm okay with it because. That works for me. And I will probably put some heat shrink on it if I've got some somewhere. So I suppose the best you know, the thing is like this is plastic this thing here and if you throw that out into the waste stream it's just gonna it's not it's not gonna degrade, it's just gonna be damaging the environment long term, leaching god knows what kind of chemicals into the environment. Uh, I get this open. This is also Maplin. I liked Maplin. The people used to give it a bad rep said it had a bad reputation and it had lost its way and it was no longer the the place for true electronics enthusiasts. And to a certain extent they were right and they were wrong because to me Maplin was never a proper hardcore electronics store. It was a store that kind of sold electronic gadgets and some electronics components uh, for the hobbyist. And you'd get people who go in with ridiculously specific things, like they wanted some sort of integrated controller, and then they'd complain that they, that Maplin didn't have it, and that wasn't really Maplin's business. Now, if you wanted stuff like that, you'd go to Farnell or Radio Spares or one of those big sort of special Element 14, one of those specialist sort of places that supplies industry. Just waiting for my 
soldering iron to warm up so I can tin it. But um, it was a it was, it was sad to see it go because I think they over expanded far too quickly. So they went from having like 14 shops in the 90s to 200 and something shops when they closed. And to be honest, we, you know, they had they ended up selling a lot of stuff that you just didn't really associate with, with them. Like they were really big into weird children's toys, like motorized toy cars that motorized toy cars, like that kids could ride in. The sort of stuff you'd expect to find in an upmarket toy store, and not uh, a place like Maplin. I also did like well, they were big into other good stuff like. Um, Raspberry Pi and Arduinos and all, so they weren't. They were a decent enough company, and they had a reputation for staff who didn't know what they were doing and were too focused on sales. But I found that the staff in the, the central Dublin branch were actually pretty good. So they knew what they were doing, uh, they were always very willing to help. Um, okay, some of them didn't have a clue, but most were pretty decent. Um, there's always a few in every store that don't know what they're doing. You know, it's like when you go into Argos and. Uh, the guy comes behind, screaming, How much are the singing handbags? Hmm. The manager goes, They aren't singing handbags, they're Bluetooth speakers. Well, you always get something like that going on. Anyway, this is not very good tape, is it? <laughs> this is probably the stuff I got in Deals, which is Poundland, by any other name. So, I will just put a a little bit around there, just enough to stop them touching. And I'll put a fold this back here, put it around here. So what I'm going to do is put some heat shrink tube, heat shrink tubing on this in a bit. I don't have a hot air gun at the moment, so I can't really do that. And I have to put a bit of hot glue in there, and then I'll tape this down. But oh no! Hold that to the sun, it works. So, like I say, simple repair. Don't throw things out. Fix them. Cheers. Take care. Bye bye.